if you find the content relevant then do like share and subscribe to the channel also hit the bell button to get a regular notification also do share your experiences and any suggestion that you have in the comment box hope you enjoy Hi, hi Rohit. Uh, so today we have Rohit with us, who is a chartered accountant. He gave CAT score a ninety nine point two two percentile. He also went for the interviews, including uh, all IAMs apart from B, C, and I. He converted all his IAM calls, and he is going to join IAM Ahmedabad. So let us look at uh, understand from him how did he go about preparing for the PI and the VAT stage, right? So hi Rohit, how do you feel? Getting into Ahmedabad. Oh well, yeah, I'm just uh, I was a little relieved, and now I'm sort of looking forward to so uh, what I am has to offer. So hopefully the college will actually be good. So can you run us through the journey of how did you prepare for PI and VAT for the interviews? So, so uh, I mean, uh, so I figured. I mean, when this course came out, I figured that I had a, a decent chance of getting a decent call. So I, I started. You know, I started uh, preparing for my PI. So what uh, what I did initially was to cover my bases. That's basically know about myself, introspect, you know, figure out why I'm doing something, doing what I'm doing, what uh, I'm doing at work, things like that. Uh, my strengths, weaknesses, all of those things. So I figured that first. Then second, I went on to went on to my background. So considering I was a CA, I feel I covered uh, whatever basics there were there, and uh, let's say whether it comes came to finance accounts. Uh, accounts and, and some other subjects so i went through all of them and then economics i i did a quite a bit of economics as well so, so that's sort of basically that's the base i sort of covered and then from then i sort of built on to how one needs to approach let's say i what i did was i mean i was already re uh, reading my newspapers and stuff so current affairs wasn't too much of a problem but uh for, especially for preparing for that i sort of started you know picking out for data that i could use everywhere so whether it was let's say some education data you know Broad data that can be fit in two places. So that's basically how it's sort of like. So fine. So let us divide your preparation to VAT and PI. So how did you go about preparing for yeah. the VAT? So uh, how I so first uh, so so uh, I mean Ahmedabad has a completely different uh, uh, sort of way of VAT. So it's called analytical writing test, which is sort of very similar to uh, GMAT, where you need to uh, figure out whether the whether the a certain statement. Strengthens the argue, uh, argument. If, is it if whether it's a strong argument? What can strengthen it? What can weaken it? So then I sort of went through the GMAT website and figured out how people sort of answer those questions. And so once I figured that base out, you know, the uh, very structure of it, then I went about uh, and then I went about solving some VATs. You know, for, uh, and just to have an understanding, saying that since VAT is too unpredictable, anything can be thrown at you. So I figured that on a large to large basis, whether I could. Figure out most of my uh, VAT answer. I come up with some decent solution. Most of my VAT answers, and then once that got over for the other uh, for the other IMs, uh, there was a I mean there was more like an essay sort of structure. So I started writing a couple of them, and eventually I sort of got used to it because it's been a while since you know all of us have given like an essay before. So once I got used to that, uh, then I sort of started improvising, saying where I could. You know, make improvements. Whether something there could be some sort of good introduction, saying whatever sort of made sense with how I would usually approach something. So, uh, I mean, some people go for something like a quote or some some extract of a book. So, some things like that. What really suited me, I figured those things out, and uh, and then come up with some data. So, data was something that I really look forward to. Something like let's say a data on education, saying X amount of people aren't as educated as they'd want to be. Uh, and, the, and thus, this, this is some data where you can put it into something like an economic development uh, article as well. Something that that's to do with children and education as well. So, so the broad-based data which you can sort of fit into multiple areas. So that's sort of broadly important. So you had a lot of data in your VAT when you wrote the VAT for the IAMs. Did you put in a lot of data? No, actually, uh, so so the Ahmedabad one was completely uh, completely different. I think more ethics-based, so there wasn't too much room for data. But nonetheless, I mean, uh, when you read data, you sort of read the nuances between behind it. So, so it's still pretty helpful. And for the other IAMs, did you use data out there? So, 
Uh, so, so there was one, there was one to do with, uh, so Lucknow didn't, I mean, by the time there was already COVID-19, so I had uh, my VAT cancelled. So the only other one was a common admission process and the one at Koi Code. So there the data, so the data didn't help, but I used to read books. So reading books really helped that. So you could pick up some articles, uh, some, uh, you know, extracts in the book. Uh, most of what I read was non-fiction. So it was really easy to put those into the answers. So that sort of helped, but not too much data. I think a couple of data regarding voting data and something I had read, which sort of applied because they asked for universal voting in the format. So what kind of books did you read that you feel helped you in your VAT? Built to Last was one uh, book that I read, considering, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's sort of like a management book. I mean, it's, it's to do with companies and such. So you sort of gain perspective on that. So, and there, uh, you know, it's sort of, uh, so just to put it in context, in Koi Code, they asked me whether, uh, uh, whether immuni whether, um, if any vaccines developed, should the patents be shared or should they be registered? So there, there was an art, there was a company research on Johnson and Johnson. How they said that their, their main purpose is to serve the people rather than make money. So that really, I sort of fit that into this. And so that was one book that really helped me. And considering my background, I was, uh, I was, uh, re I was reading a book called The Price, which is basically how the oil, uh, how, how oils come to be right from when it was discovered first to how it is today. So that, that was really important to my interview. And to an extent, I hoped it came to that as well book on oil you read because you're working in BPCL and that link to your interview is it I mean but since I was working in BPCL uh, I was already interested in how the how crude actually developed and how it's come about to this day so I was actually interested in it and sudden I mean it just so happened that I actually came across that book so I figured I might as well pick it up because I mean it's going to help someday so I picked it up and I'm sorry, sorry. Okay. so coming to the interview stage so what do you think the interviewers look out for when they interview you So based on, based on the experience that I had, so uh, I think majorly they're looking for two things. One is whether you can apply what you've learned in, in uh, real scenarios or in let's say case studies or examples that they might give. So the fact that what you've learned, whether you can apply it to the real world or not. So that is one thing that they sort of look for. And uh, in most of my interviews, what they did was, so they used to test you on your substance basically, but it used to so happen that the level up, I mean, it keeps going a level up and eventually you're meant to reach a point where you sort of don't know what you're, I mean, you sort of don't know the answer to it. And that's when they sort of test you on your mental, really, I mean, on your mental ability on whether how you're able to deal with that situation. So if I were to, and, and I've had quite a few of interactions with uh, panel, people who have been panelists, whether they're ex-professors or uh, alums from them who are part of the panel. And that's what uh, everybody who's told me is one for, whether, whether you can conduct yourself properly and second, based on your depth and your width of knowledge in terms of the practical applicability. So can you run us through maybe a couple of interviews that you faced? Any of the IM that you faced, which you want to run through it? So, so the IM A interview was a little tricky. So, I mean, uh, at first, uh, so, so when I got in, so they asked me about how BPCL was doing. And considering BPCL, I mean, still is in the process of privatization, it's sort of the go-to uh, place. So, uh, so there are a couple of questions on that. Then they sort of uh, asked me saying, uh, okay, so which other companies there in, let's say this particular business segment, they asked me which other companies there in the LPG business segment. I mean, I wasn't from LPG, but then, you know, when you're doing it, you need to sort of figure all these things out. So luckily I was able to answer that. And then, uh, then came a really tricky question on auction. I mean, considering it's a public sector undertaking. So there are a lot of auction blocks, I mean, considering it's a crude. So he came up with this really, I mean, really unique and challenging sort of question, which basically said that uh, there are some X amount of bid. I think there are eight more bidders than you are. And uh, you know that the value of the block that is being auctioned is 100. And uh, the other bidders are somewhere ranging from 0 to 100, uh, 0 to 200. So, and you want to get the auction. So what is the price at which you're going to bid, where you maximize your potential maximize your probability to get that option and at the same time maximize the benefit to the company as well. So that's the question that he threw at me. I mean, so then I started solving it. I mean, uh, I figured it's a tough one. So at least, you know, you sort of at least make an attempt to start solving things. So I sort of wrote, wrote down the answers and then figured how logic worked. I somehow tried to fit maxima minima into it and, uh, uh, and LPP as well. Somewhere I tried to fix that in. So, and he wanted a really specific answer and, and, and I was 
trying to put things uh, into paper and then he sort of you know they sort of saying that i could not do it and it is too hard for me and i should probably let it go and things like that so and then i sort of went on about it i sort of didn't give the exact answer i think the exact answer was 100 so i gave the answer saying a little about 100 i said something like 101 so uh, I, and then i later went on in google is this uh, uh, it's this uh, as this case study on something called a vickery auction where uh, I, and i think the uh, the sorry there's one addition to this the um, the blog gets awarded to the highest bidder but at the price of the second highest bidder okay so so that was the question so that was the tricky part of the question so is it something called vickery auction so i didn't i couldn't get that right but i think the way that i sort of went about it sort of helped me a little bit in the end okay so that was the first. yeah any tips for preparation for the students uh, so one is to not do an overkill so that's what at least i follow or say not to do an overkill so at least be yourself i mean i mean whatever works for you is good enough to sort of get through so not try to pretend something that you're not and and one and the second is to cover all your bases i mean the very fundamentals of things because there's nothing more embarrassing than not knowing something what you're supposed to know so i think that pretty much covers the basics of it one is to be you know not to do an overkill just take it as any other conversation and try to sort of make a conversation rather than make it sort of an interrogation so and to cover your bases so. okay just wanted to add what what how were the other interviews different from amdabar so you described your amdabar interviews how was maybe the lucknow or the koi core interview different from the i am interview amdabar interview so uh, i i i didn't quite know this until i sort of went for the koi code interview but i think koi code it's known for known for sort of you know sort of putting some pressure or trying to put some pressure on the candidates so uh, so everyone that came outside and are talking to others they're saying that oh they're trying to stress me out they're asking me random stuff and things like that so so but when i went to the interview the very first question they asked me was whether i was stressed i said i wasn't i mean i wasn't stressed and they, and then and then uh, they sort of asking me a couple of question that you know that would i they meant to sort of throw you off guard so but once i got that right they sort of the the, the tone of them sort of they sort of gentle into a normal sort of conversation and it's and it one of the better i mean probably one of the best interviews that i had because it went out so smoothly after that so i think what's really important is sort of i mean they do try to catch you off guard but as long as you sort of hold on to your ground then you can sort of do it really well okay uh what do you i mean what do you think one thing that brought you closer to your dream uh, so uh, one thing that sort of brought me close to my this thing was uh one since i was uh, i mean since uh, something like an interview is so qualitative so you can't really i mean you can't really uh, sort of ask people for too much feedback because then it figure because you can't incorporate all of them because it, there's not right and wrong in this so there was this one discussion i had with an ex professor of mine in bangalore so i sort of asked them that you know how i mean what's your take off and what do you sort of look for in the candidates why do you ask let's say this question or why do you go for this question and what feedback do you have for me so one thing that he really stressed upon was to not have an overkill so not do an overkill just to be yourself not not don't to try to don't try too hard to impress or don't try too hard to uh, you know display as if you know things uh, i know too many things about so so that sort of really helped me so that, that's one advice i really sort of to con saying is not to not do an overkill and many ways it's probably the easiest advice to take because then you sort of can do on with your how you normally go about things and that sort of worked out great great yeah thanks for it thanks for giving your time for you know giving the interview so, i'm sure your experiences will help everyone yeah thanks thanks for being there and all the best for your amdabad journey